Hi, I'm Sean Yeo, and welcome back to Four Together. Thanks for joining us again. For this podcast, I'm reading the 2019 platform of the Green Party of Canada. Every part. But I'm doing it over nine easy-to-listen-to episodes. I hope that this is a great way for you to learn about our platform. Not everyone likes reading long documents, and not everyone can find the time to read something this long. That's why I'm doing this. We're also committed to being inclusive in how we share our platform, and we want to make our platform accessible to as many Canadians as possible. The idea of this podcast is to give you an audiobook of the Green Party platform so that you can learn what the Green Party is all about while you're on your way to work or out for a run or whatever you love to do while you listen to podcasts. Now, to get the platform yourself, just go to greenparty.ca slash platform and to find out who your local Green Party candidate is, you can go to greenparty.ca slash candidates. And just put in your postal code and it'll look up and show you who your candidate is. However you're listening, welcome. And we'd love to hear from you. So you can email us at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com. Whatever platform questions or feedback you have, we'd love to hear from you. We'll read everything that you send us and do our best to reply as well. We're hoping to be able to share some of the questions and feedback as well. So if you'd prefer we don't share your comments, please mention that in your message. All right, it's time for episode four. In this episode, we're going to cover the Greens' vision for transitioning to a green economy. Transitioning to a green economy. Many people, including those in other political parties, are now talking about the need to transition to a green economy. Like many other policy innovations, the idea originates with the Green Party. Economy and ecology have the same Greek root, eco, which means home or household. Economics refers to household management, the responsible care and sustenance of its members. Ecology is the study of our collective home, the earth. Greens understand that managing the human household depends on careful stewardship of the earth household. Green parties were started four decades ago by concerned citizens who recognize that the economies of wealthy countries are unsustainable. They depend on ever-expanding extraction of natural resources, non-renewable and polluting energy sources, and unlimited consumerism. On a finite planet, this strategy, which worked well for much of the 20th century, leads eventually to a dead end. Now we have entered the, quote, period of consequences. The climate emergency, mass extinction, the plastic waste crisis, the growing gap between rich and poor, an unraveling social safety net, widespread anxiety and depression, these are the byproducts of a growth economy that is out of sync with nature and people. From their beginnings, green parties have proposed an alternative, a quote, green economy, that respects nature's limits, provides everyone with a dignified high quality of life, embraces diversity and responsibly stewards public finances. Economic policy flows out of a social and environmental policy. In other words, Greens are committed to providing a good living for all within our financial and ecological means. Here are the key elements of a green economy. Measures well-being rather than gross domestic product as a sign of progress. Embeds conserver society values rather than consumer society values. Powered by renewable energy. Designed around closed loop production systems. Organized for zero waste generation. Organized for local food security. Guarantees everyone a livable income. Provides affordable housing for everyone. Provides universal comprehensive health care and education. Protects minorities from discrimination. Ensures gender equality. Builds community resilience and self-reliance. Ensures fair taxation and fiscal stewardship. With these guideposts, a green government would have the following priorities. The world of work. 
This section is labeled with a sustainable development goal of decent work and economic growth. The world of work is changing rapidly. Union membership and therefore protection of workers is at an all-time low. In the growing gig economy, more and more Canadians are engaged in precarious work without benefits or security. The growth of artificial intelligence, AI, technologies will accelerate workplace automation and eliminate many jobs. And the climate crisis necessitates a rapid transition away from the fossil fuel dependent economic sectors towards a renewable energy economy. See Mission Possible. We are overdue to modernize our employment insurance program to better meet the needs of today, including through portability of benefits. While such structural adjustments are disruptive and stressful for workers and their families, new opportunities abound in the green economy. In 2017, 268,000 people were already employed in the clean energy sector in Canada. This does not include the 436,000 jobs in the energy efficiency sector and we have not yet begun a serious national retrofit of buildings and industries or a serious transition away from fossil fuels. Projections put future jobs in energy efficiency retrofits alone at 4 million. In comparison, 62,000 people worked in the oil and gas sector nationally in 2018. This shift is already happening in the millennial generation. In the UK, the number of university graduates going into oil and gas exploration has fallen by 61% since 2014. Responsible leadership looks to where the puck is headed, not where it is now. In the face of such change, the Green Party has three priorities. 1. Protecting workers whose income and work lives are being and will be disrupted by AI and the transition away from fossil fuels. 2. Enabling the creation of new jobs in the green economy. 3. Facilitating the transition of workers from shrinking sectors into those jobs. A just and fair transition to a green economy. Inevitably, jobs in fossil fuel sectors will disappear. The Green Party is committed to a just transition of workers from these sectors into new ones. This will include measures such as income protection, jobs guarantees, retraining, and resettlement. The detailed programs would be developed in partnership with workers and their unions. A green government will create a just transition framework for oil, gas, and coal sector workers that reflects the unique conditions of each province. This would be modeled on the recommendations of the Task Force on Just Transition for Canadian Coal Power Workers and Communities, which we would implement in full. They are adapted to all three sectors, embed just transition principles in planning, legislative, regulatory, and advisory processes to ensure ongoing and concrete actions throughout the fossil fuel phase-out transition, including meeting directly with affected communities to learn about their priorities and to connect them with federal programs that could support their goals. Establishing a dedicated, comprehensive, inclusive, and flexible just transition funding program for affected communities. Developing and implementing a just transition plan for workers in fossil fuel sectors championed by a lead minister who oversees and reports on progress. Integrating provisions for just transition in federal environmental and labor legislation and regulations, as well as relevant intergovernmental agreements. Establishing a targeted long-term research fund for studying the impact of the sector phase-out and the transition to a low-carbon economy. Ensure locally available supports, including funding the establishment and operation of locally driven transition centers in affected communities. Identify and fund local infrastructure projects in affected communities. Provide a pathway to retirement by creating a pension bridging program for workers who will retire earlier than planned due to the phase-out. 
transition workers to sustainable employment by creating a detailed and publicly available inventory with labor market information pertaining to oil, coal, and gas workers, such as skills profiles, demographics, locations, and current and potential employers. Creating a comprehensive funding program for workers staying in the labor market to address their needs across the stages of securing a new job, including income support, education, and skills building, reemployment, and mobility. Investing in comprehensive retraining and apprenticeship programs for industrial trades workers for jobs in the transition to a zero carbon economy, especially the renewable and energy efficiency sectors. Creating new jobs in the green economy. The fossil fuel industry has benefited from tens of billions of dollars in public subsidies over the last 50 years. A green government will phase out those subsidies and invest the money in green economic sectors. Establish a Canadian Sustainable Generations Fund to make critical investments in trades, apprenticeships and education required for the transition to a green economy. These investments in skills training will complement targeted national infrastructure investments in energy efficiency, renewable energy production, digital upgrades, clean tech manufacturing and emerging technologies, tourism, the creative economy and the care economy. Establish a national community benefit strategy that leverages public procurement to maximize opportunities for social hiring and procurement, including Indigenous procurement, youth employment and demand-driven skills development programs. Enhance the federal youth employment and skills strategy by creating a community and environment service corps. This will provide $1 billion annually to municipalities to hire Canadian youth. Responding to automation disruption. Labor market analysts are projecting a massive disruption due to automation. Technological change will always outpace society's ability to adapt, leaving workers vulnerable to losing their jobs and unable to adjust to the new reality. A green government will prepare for such changes. Work with provinces, territories, and indigenous peoples to establish a guaranteed livable income to provide basic income security for all, including displaced workers. See Ending Poverty. Study the impacts of adopting a shorter work week, which would distribute paid work among more people. Eliminate post-secondary education tuition to help workers train for new employment. Ensuring justice in the workplace. The struggle for fair treatment and good working conditions requires constant vigilance. Respect the unionized employees of the federal public service and the bargaining process by rejecting back-to-work legislation as a bargaining tool. Ban unpaid internships in private sector workplaces. The exception is work-study or experiential learning placements associated with four-credit courses at post-secondary institutions. Fully implement federal pay equity rules. Establish a federal ombudsman to provide impartial and non-departmental help to harassed and demoralized employees. Within the federal civil service, workers are still bullied by supervisors and redress is illusory. Fair taxation. This section is labeled with the sustainable development goals of decent work and economic growth and reduced inequalities. In a green economy, everyone contributes their fair share to the collective well-being. Today, the growing gap between rich and poor indicates that something is wrong. The burden of taxation is not fairly distributed. A green government will undertake root and branch tax reform. Establish an arm's length federal tax commission to analyze the tax system for fairness and accessibility based on the principle of progressive taxation. The last tax commission was in the 1960s, so reform is long overdue. This will include recommending an appropriate way to tax cryptocurrencies. Close tax loopholes that benefit the wealthy. The stock auction loophole is one of the most expensive and unfair tax loopholes. 
Executives with stock options as part of their remuneration package only pay half the rate of income tax on this portion of their income. The capital gains loophole allows people and corporations to only add half of their capital gains to their taxable income, while those with only employment income pay taxes on their entire income. Over 90% of the value of this tax break goes to the richest 10%, and about 85% goes to the top 1%. End offshore tax dodging by taxing funds hidden in offshore havens and requiring companies to prove that their foreign affiliates are actual functioning businesses for tax purposes. Provide adequate funding to the Canada Revenue Agency, CRA, to collect tax revenue hiding in offshore tax havens. Several Auditors General have recommended that the CRA should focus on people who hide vast wealth rather than conduct random audits of ordinary Canadians. Apply a corporate tax on transnational e-commerce companies doing business in Canada by requiring the foreign vendor to register, collect, and remit taxes where their product or service is consumed. The e-commerce sector, giants like Netflix, Facebook, Amazon, Google, and Uber command a significant share of the Canadian market, but pay virtually no tax. Impose a financial transaction tax of 0.2% in the financial sector as France has done since 2012. Eliminate all fossil fuel subsidies, including payments and tax write-offs valued at several billion dollars annually. These include the accelerated capital cost allowance on liquefied natural gas, LNG, and tax write-offs for oil and gas wells, coal mining exploration, and development, flow-through share deductions for coal, oil and gas projects, and oil and gas properties. Despite a promise 10 years ago to eliminate subsidies to fossil fuel companies, these subsidies have actually expanded for fracking and LNG development. Increase the federal corporate tax rate from 15 to 21 percent to bring it in line with the federal rate in the United States, our biggest trading partner. Mark Carney, former governor of the Bank of Canada, said corporations are holding, quote, hundreds of billions of dollars in their bank accounts, end quote, rather than reinvesting in the economy. This dead money needs to be mobilized for the transition to a green, renewable economy. Maintain the current level of taxation for small business. Charge a 5% surtax on commercial bank profits. Commercial banks accumulate huge profits, $43.15 billion for the five largest banks in 2018 alone. Credit unions, caisse populaire, and co-ops will be exempt. Prohibit Canadian businesses from deducting the cost of advertising on foreign-owned sites such as Google and Facebook, which now account for 80% of all spending on advertising in Canada. Eliminate the 50% corporate meals and entertainment expense deduction, which includes season tickets and private boxes at sporting events. Increase the tax credit for volunteer firefighters and search and rescue volunteers. Fair and Sustainable Trade This section is labeled with two sustainable development goals, decent work and economic growth, and climate action. Much of the global increase in climate changing pollution over the past few decades is linked to a massive increase in international trade. While this has created jobs in developing countries, poor working conditions and low wages reflect the global competition for foreign investment. A green government will work to restructure global trade relations to address climate change and social justice imperatives revamp national trade policy to align with national and international climate change plans. This includes reducing the distance over which food is shipped by increasing domestic and local food production. Protect supply management and ensure that products which are banned in Canada are not imported in food from other companies, for example, bovine growth hormone in milk products. Facilitate a global effort to reform the World Trade Organization. Building on General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, Article 20, which was always intended 
to insulate legislated domestic conservation efforts from trade disciplines, revamp the World Trade Organization to the World Trade and Climate Organization to ensure that trade is consistent with global carbon budgets. Tariffs will be assigned based on the carbon intensity of imported products. Renegotiate Canada's trade and investment agreements to remove the Investor State Dispute Settlement, ISDS, provisions that give foreign corporations extraordinary powers to challenge the laws and policies of democratically elected governments, and include binding labor, health, safety, and environmental standards. Immigration we have fostered a multicultural democracy that welcomes diversity as an asset, not a threat. Newcomers are a source of incredible skills and potential for our country. We have been enriched as peoples and cultures from around the world have come to Canada to build their lives here. Other than the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, we are all immigrants or descendants of immigrants. Immigrants come in search of greater freedoms and opportunities to build fulfilling lives for themselves and their families. Refugees and asylum seekers arrive having fled unimaginable situations in their home countries, and they seek the same thing we all aspire to. Safety, dignity, and community. Canada must review its immigration policy, especially with the demographic imbalance escalating to the point where younger generations will be required to bear the burden of supporting our aging population. We need to attract immigrants and establish a system that is fair. Recent immigrants make almost 40% less than workers born in Canada make. Fees for citizenship jumped more than 400% in 2014-15. Too many people, many of them children, are held in immigration detention an unacceptable number of them die there. Almost 500 people are in immigration detention at any given time, and in 2018, an estimated 7,300 migrants, 155 of them children, were detained. At least 17 people have died in immigration detention since 2000. A green government will make sure that all migrants are supported in achieving their hopes and ambitions as new Canadians. Ensure professionals be considered for immigration have the licensing requirements for their professions clearly explained before entry. Work with professional associations to create a robust system for evaluating the education and training credentials of immigrants against Canadian standards, with the goal of expediting accreditation and expanding professional opportunities for immigrants. Lead a national discussion to define the term environmental refugee. Advocate for its inclusion as a refugee category in Canada and accept an appropriate share of the world's environmental refugees into Canada. Allocate much greater funding for training in official languages, ESL and FSL. For new immigrants, through earmarked transfers to the provinces for primary and secondary public school and free night school programs. Work with municipalities and provinces to improve the integration of new Canadians into the multicultural fabric of our country. Support multicultural communities by assisting cultural organizations to obtain charitable status. Eliminate the Temporary Foreign Workers Program and address labor shortages by increasing immigration, working with employers to establish paths to permanent residency. Establish a program to process the estimated 200,000 people living in Canada without official status, providing a pathway to permanent residency for those who qualify. Reintroduce legislation to establish a Civilian Complaints and Review Commission for the Canada Border Services Agency. Terminate Canada's safe third country agreement with the United States. Regulate the immigration consulting industry to ensure universally fair, legal, and accessible services to help people navigate the immigration system. Increase penalties for immigration consultants convicted of human smuggling and devote more resources to investigation and enforcement. Amend the Anti-Terrorism Act and the Public Safety Act to require that, after a reasonable period, formal charges 
be brought against all those detained. Investigate allegations by the United Nations Human Rights Committee of Canadian officials cooperating with foreign agencies known to use torture. Ensure that lost Canadians, quietly being denied citizenship through archaic laws, are protected and that their citizenship is restored. Although some significant progress has been made, some are still lost. Implement the recommendation of the Standing Committee on Citizenship and Immigration to grant permanent resident status immediately to those who have refused or left military service in a war not sanctioned by the United Nations. Improve the pathway for international students and foreign workers to Canadian permanent residency and citizenship. Speed up family reunification, especially reuniting children with their parents. Increase funding of multicultural associations providing immigrant support programs, including language programs. Reimagining Canada Post. Canada Post is one of the few national institutions that survived the privatization blitz of the 1980s and 1990s. As such, it retains an important physical presence and, in many communities, stands as the only remaining symbol of a national identity. While its current mandate is narrow as a self-sustaining public corporation, it can be reimagined as a critical piece of the green economy. Canada Post's extensive physical infrastructure can be used to offer a range of services to communities building self-reliance and helping cut greenhouse gas emissions. In diversifying services, as recommended by the Canadian Union of Postal Employees, Canada Post can become more profitable while offering support to rural communities where private sector activities such as banking are being withdrawn. A green government will start by strengthening Canada Post's existing mandate and then branch out. Reverse the most recent cuts to home postal delivery, a move promised by the Liberals but not delivered. Upgrade the Canada Post fleet to electric vehicles. Reduce pollution and congestion due to the explosion of package delivery from online shopping by establishing last mile delivery by Canada Post using zero emission vehicles in urban centres. Beyond postal service improvements, the Green Party supports a new vision for Canada Post that will be of particular benefit in rural and remote communities where services such as commercial banking have been shrinking. Canada Post is uniquely positioned to train mail carriers to check on people with mobility issues or who live alone, particularly during heat waves, storms, and other emergencies, establish banking services and public high speed internet access in post offices, particularly in underserviced rural and remote communities without banks and libraries. Where space is available, allow community meetings to be held in post offices. Provide charging stations for electric vehicles in post office parking lots. And that's it for this episode. We went over the Green Party vision for addressing the climate emergency. Now, to get the platform yourself, you can check out greenparty.ca slash platform. And to find out who your local Green Party candidate is, go to greenparty.ca slash candidates, put in your postal code, and we'll look up exactly who your local Green Party candidate is. Thank you so much for your time. Once again, we'd love to hear from you. Please email us at platformpodcast2019 at gmail.com. If you have any platform questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. We'll read everything that you send us and do our best to reply as well. We're hoping to be able to share some of the questions and feedback as well, so if you'd prefer we don't share your comments, please mention that in your message. Coming up next is Episode 5, where we'll finish this section of the Green Party platform, Transitioning to a Green Economy, Part 2. I'm Sean Yo, and thanks so much for joining us. See you next episode.